welcome Vic to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, so, so I'm we're going to become a now. guitarist today. Yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Sweden at the moment, uh, up north. It's a, it's uh, there's snow and there's uh, uh, people skiing and shit. So, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations with the, the new album, Abracadabra. Thank you very much. That's no, fantastic. Feels good. Feels good. Yeah. yeah, yeah thank you very much. I must say, you're playing on this album, which is crazy, crazy good. <laughs> Appreciate that. It, uh, I worked really hard to, to push myself, actually, very hard. Yeah. Especially, especially with the, with the solos, I I took it. I I did it actually back home. I I, I took the the files and brought it back home, so I had I can work. Uh, in peace and not being stressed about studio time and all that shit. So I just did it in my basement, which nice. is tons of fun. Yeah. It was a very creative, creative period. So do you find you you pushed yourself to do like new new things because you had that time? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I had, had time to to write and explore and really dig into what's being played in the background. How can I make this interesting? And not just pick a scale. Yeah. And then, and then, just of course, you can do that, and it's going to sound great. Mm. But but there, there is much more to it than than, than just playing a scale, if you want. Oh. Oh, exactly. I mean, that really comes across in you know, a lot of the songs. Uh, the one in particular for me was, um, I mean, "Catch Me If You Can." The your solo oh, in that okay. one—it's probably one of my favorite solos. Yeah. Just the you got to be everything. You know, yeah, you got <laughs> yeah, you got <laughs> visual riffs. You got yeah, harmoni- uh, harmonies, speed picking. You know, <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah, there's, I cover a lot of ground in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I, I like the way I, most of the solos are recorded twice. And then I just, I just pan them left and right. And then, well, they do the same thing, but sometimes they uh, burst out in, in, in the harmonies, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah. So the harmonies, you're actually playing, aren't you? You're not using a harmony pedal? No, no, I, I just play harmonies, yeah. Yep. Most mostly uh, um, a third, third up. Or, yeah. Yep. Yeah. How about live? Do you use any pedals? Or how many pedals? I mean, harm? No, no, no. Yeah. Not necessary. Yeah. Because we are very, very. Uh, there's no room for that because we are such a energetic, energetic band, and there's so much stuff happening that that those kind of really, really small details. Uh, I think it's more work that than effect. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but now it's, like I said, I mean, for one of the uh, was that one of the first singles, that one "Catch Me If You Can." That was the, yeah, that was the first thing. Yeah. First one, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you represented kind of this album in a very good way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a great way to to get it going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would have been a little bit tricky, like after that thing. Oh, what are we going to release now? You know, after getting one out. <laughs> I, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, you do have your five. So you got the uh, yeah, dreams in red, uh, weep when you die, forever in a day. Sorry, for, yeah, forever in a day. And uh, fighter, you know, and you just released a video for Abracadabra too, haven't you? Yeah, it was a lyric video. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's really it was like supposed that. to be a. It was supposed to be a, a proper video, to be honest. But something went wrong with the planning. The, our our idea was really cool, but but the person that was supposed to do it just kind of bailed out at the last moment and just we had to unfortunately uh, uh, skip that idea but but it turned out really good i think i like the the, the footage it just looks dark and it fits the the word abracadabra it kind of fits well together yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you could have released something there up, up in the snow you know the abracadabra <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> when it's snowboard and stuff <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah. yeah but um yeah going back to uh, Dreams in Red. Now, I noticed uh, I, I saw you guys on, on YouTube. I think it was from November last year. And you mm-hmm. performed that song. And you had a, another guy jump up to do vocals. So, who was that? I guess vocalist. Oh, depends on, on what gig you think. <laughs> Sometimes our gigs get a bit messy and a lot of friends <laughs> are up on stage. <laughs> oh, really? I, I, think that, that, I think that was the, 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 a friend called... Uh, hmm. Who was it? Well, I think it was the Gothenburg show. 
Is it? I think it's Ulof. Ulof. Is okay. is a, a songwriting friend of the. Band. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we kind of collaborate a lot, and his input and and his his writing it fits us really well. So if you look at who's written the songs, it's band and Ulof. Okay. So it's, it's collaboration. Yeah. I mean, it starts from the band. Everything starts, from, and then we involve him when we need uh, uh, extra extra set of ears. Yeah. He's got a great voice. Who it was? Oh yeah, he's, he's, yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's got a very cool metal voice. Yeah, yeah, really, that's right. Yeah, very, very Rob Halfordy kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. I actually wrote that on my notes. <laughs> I said, "Remind me of Rob Halford." Um, yeah, nice. Sorry, <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell him that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I, I wrote that here. A combination of Rob Halford and probably Jeff Tate, but not as nice, radical, right. I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was really good. Um, and also, "Weep When You Die." The you got the choir at the start, and I found that song. The the vocal melody was really cleverly written. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, <clears throat> it's a really cool song. I like I like the the it's it's a bit heavier than than uh, if you compare it to "Catch Me If You Can." Yeah, yeah. This one is a bit more. Bit heavy, like you say, it's got a great, great melody. Yeah, just the way he uses his voice in this song, it's um, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, it's a lot of different ranges and just the melodies and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. cool man. Um, now on fighter, is that a, a 12 string you're using on that? It is, it is. Oh, good, <laughs> I got it right. Hey, <laughs> yeah, well, it's it, it, it's got that. Uh, we actually use 12 string and a six string to kind of combine those two and, and I think we dubbed like tons of guitars just to kind of get that really really rich sound yeah uh, and why we chose the 12 string is because it's got that hook to it sound hook to it mm. it sounds in a certain way and that riff uh, was written I don't know if it was because uh, Ade the drummer he wrote the, he wrote the riff okay uh, I think I think he bought bought he, he set in mind to write a 12 string riff and he bought us pro string guitar and then he wrote that one mm. so then then the rest of the song just kind of came came through okay and is that standard tuning the one no oh wait good <laughs> question <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the album is is uh, e flat yeah well half step down but i <laughs> good question i gotta <laughs> check that because <laughs> i don't really remember uh I'll check that after interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully you're not playing it live tomorrow night, are you? <laughs> uh, I, we're saving we're saving that song for for uh, for Sweden Rock. Okay, yeah. we're doing a show, uh, summer show, because uh, these are clubs, and we kind of are, are a bit more careful with ballad songs in clubs because it changes the dynamic of the show quite a lot. So we made oh, yeah. it kind of uh, yeah. So, but if it fits, it fits. We'll do it. But and it's a late gig tonight. It's at eleven o'clock, eleven a.m. p.m. 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 eleven yeah. p.m. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of. I don't think that people want to hear a ballad that that late. They just want to continue partying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> they want. They want people to start crying in the middle yeah. of the set. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Now, I saw that some of your yeah. videos on your YouTube channel when you're down in uh, Australia as well. Uh, yeah. like just before the uh the world went crazy <laughs> 2019 yeah, 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 exactly. yeah yeah i like i like doing those videos on tour it's mm. uh, people appreciate it and it shows a uh, side of the band that i guess yeah. people don't see very often yeah, yeah and there's so much so much so much stuff to see and so much time to do it why not just record it and, and show people what we do yeah exactly no that's great yeah. it's great for yeah, people to watch as well. See what's going on behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, but it, it takes forever to edit those videos. So I, that's why I haven't released anything in like two years. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, so you do it all yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I so saw what, you started uh, following my channel, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you use? Is it is it Final Cut or just iMovie? No, iMovie. Okay. Not nothing fancy fancy. I just kind of uh, just wing it. Just kind of 
what I think looks good. No fancy fancy stuff. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, yeah so the one on the in Australia, I noticed you guys at Max Watts here in Melbourne, because I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Mm, mm, and mm. You were mentioning about that was your second gig with a band back in was it 2008? Was it? Uh, oh. Yeah, 2008. Uh, yeah, first one was Sydney. Yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that. I got some really good memories from both. It was it was a strange time. I, you know, I was 26, I think, and, and I got two days to learn 14 songs and then fly to Australia. You know, I've never been on tour prior to that. Just great, crazy experience for yeah. for a kid. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. So, so you've been here a few times now since then. Australia. Mm. Yeah, we've been uh, two or three times. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, next year. We, I mean, like you said, things are starting to open back up. We, yeah, you know, bands yeah. are starting to come back over again, which is really good. So yeah. hopefully, yeah, yeah, Those hopefully we'll come back. We will certainly come back at some point because it's so much fun traveling Australia, and it's it's a um, great experience. Great experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey. Morning. How are you? He, he, he was supposed to do interviews with me, but he just woke up. Oh. <laughs> oh, last night, last night he was like, "Oh, just wake me up. I can do the interview. I like that stuff." Yeah, right. <laughs> he was out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, so, with the, the the shows you're doing now, is there many songs from the album, the new album? All, all singles except uh, "Fire." All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, last night we premiered uh, uh, Abracadabra and uh, Forever in a Day. That was the first oh, yeah. time we played them. Oh, cool. It's always a bit because when you practice it at home, it's one thing, and then you go to the rehearsal space, that's another thing, and then you go live, that's even another thing. <laughs> it's really kind of uh, you kind of think I know that song, and then you come live. It's like okay, I do know the song, but it's a totally different feel. Yeah. Totally different, different uh, emotion to, to, to relate to. Yeah. Uh, sure. So when you when you're sitting at home in the bedroom, and you can I know this song, yes and no. You just need to you do it live, and then you'll know the song. You know? Yeah, that's right. So actually, I must ask you because I released an album as well last year, just like a more of a guitar type album. I had different guests on there from all over the world. Uh, oh, nice. Have to check it out. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just called. Uh, I actually did a collaboration with another guitarist in Brazil called Phoenix Van der Weyden. She's an amazing guitarist. Okay, uh, cool. And we had like yeah, Jennifer Batten play on a track from Michael Jackson's band and Brett nice. Garth there and all these different players. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Um, cool. Yeah, but um, going back now, like that was recorded probably say October last year, but we're just thinking about doing like a little live thing. But I've had to really go back and learn some of the songs. You know, just. Refresh memory. So, does that happen to you as well? Oh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> I forget. Oh my god! If somebody was was put me on stage now and tell me to play a song from Split Your Lip or some other album, I'm like, dude, I don't even know what key that is. <laughs> 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 so yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I have to refresh, play it, or, or listen to it, and kind of imagine me playing it. Yeah, and if you yeah. if you ever got to the stage where you're just like. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> We're trying to figure it oh, out. Almost every night. <laughs> yeah. You know, those blackouts are just, oh my God, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but there's, um, sometimes you just have to trust yourself. In that I know this. Yeah, yeah. I, I get this. Yeah, just let, let, your, uh, let your brain process uh, just your fingers, you know. Because you've done it so many times, it, it's buried somewhere. You know, you just need to dig it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. During the pandemic, you were doing guitar lessons. So, are you, are you still doing that? Unfortunately, not. I don't. I do not have the time anymore. Yeah, yeah. There was. Uh, uh, I did that because I really didn't know what what I was supposed to do, mm. uh, and it was an extremely, extremely good learning experience. I did that for a year, and it was. I discovered that that I really love teaching. And I really love love uh, breaking it down to people so they understand. Because I I've had struggled with music all my life, not understanding stuff. So just kind of 
got sick of it and started breaking down stuff, everything. And that led to me digging even deeper into studying music. So I, I then I started, I got accepted to, to a music school in my hometown. So I'm now, I'm now currently studying music for five years. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's been an interesting turn in my life. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, because yeah. I did the same thing you know, during the whole pandemic. It's, I mean, I, that's my main job. I'm a guitar teacher at the schools and everything. Yeah. But yeah, it was oh, all nice. Yeah, it all had to be done online. And um, yeah, it just really opened the doors up, really, to, like you're saying, you teach anywhere in the world. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. So I've still got some students now that continue on, you know, from India and Canada and all over the place. So. That's fantastic, man. Yeah. I, I love I love uh, talking about teaching because mm. it kind of opens up. Oh, you look at it that way. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I can use that in my uh, in my teaching. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So going back to the, the album, which uh, we mainly want to talk about. So with the the riffs and everything, were they all new from last year, or did you already have some of these riffs previously from over the years? I think this is all, all new stuff. Uh, no. No, uh, actually, fun story about um, Throw a Brick, a song from the new album. Yeah, yeah. That riff was written back when I started the band. Okay. Me, me, me and Ade were sitting in his in his house, I remember. And I was like, I got this idea. And we started working on it. And we recorded a small demo of, of, the, of, of those, those riffs. And then we forgot about it. And then I told him, you know, remember that song that we did? You know, blah, blah, blah. it's like, oh yeah, maybe we should do something about it. So that's the only old riff that that was. Everything else is new. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. How, how do you come up with a lot of your ideas? It's just like, do you actually sit there and say, okay, okay I'm going to write this type of riff, or just um, at night time when you go to bed, well, it comes to you? <laughs> uh, Ade, the drummer, he, he writes. 99 percent of the stuff that that, that we uh oh, really? okay yeah so he he comes up with the uh, with the ideas with the song like this you know first chorus mm. doesn't you know he, he can come up with just the uh intro and then what where can i go with this he he, he does that and then he we get involved and then we kind of take it to the next level so that's that's kind of the process that we have that's handy to have a drummer that can um play a bit of guitar yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely he, He's great. He's a great guitar player. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His process, I guess. I guess he listens to a lot of music, and then he learns a lot of songs, and then from that comes inspiration to. Uh, we actually started talking about what we would like to do on the next record. Yesterday, we started talking about that. Oh, okay. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, we kind of start 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 looking for the new new path and new records so yeah that's all that's already ongoing <laughs> yeah, yeah so how about with the the solos I'm, I'm guessing he just says to you do your thing for the solos or does he do some of that yeah no i actually do i, I what i did with this record because i kind of i kind of like working alone because yeah. then i don't have to be stressed about taking people's time and all that i can do it you know whenever i want so i i went back home I lived three hours away from from the guys. So I took the fires back home and and, and went to my studio in my basement and then just, you know, started working. Yeah. And that's how that's how uh, all the show was written. In my basement, basically. Oh, yeah. Where I, I took my time with every every riff to figure out what, you know, what what do I want with this? What, you know, which way? What mm. to do? Harmonies, no harmonies, mm. shred, no shred. <laughs> You know, melodies. What What do I want? Yeah. Is there something in the song that I can use? You know, a chorus melody. Oh, cool! I can bring that back in, so make it into a better hook. You know. Mm. I mean, like yeah, like I was saying at the start of the interview, you, know, you really your style on this, uh, this album. You really do have a bit of everything. It's um, it was hard for me to tell. All, you know, what's what's it sound like, or who who can you tell the influences are? But it's just like a bit of everything. So who are your main influences? Good question. Uh, when it gets to vibrato and the tone, yeah. I guess Ingve is my main. Uh, I mean, he's the way he he just approaches a note. He, it's great, and then I, I love I love Randy Rhodes. I love oh, his, his his playing. It's it's so much fun to listen to. 
uh, and and the trick that I did on the album, I panned the solos left to right. I recorded them twice, and I just that's what he did. If you listen to the, the album, he recorded the same solo twice and just expand them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, Dimebag made big influence on me. Yeah. Um, there, there's Slash, of course. Mm. You know. Um, but but I don't I don't I've never tried to copy anyone. Yeah, for sure. I just kind of always did my own thing. But but of course you can hear influences that I've listened to. My vibrato is is. You can kind of hear that. Oh, okay, got that long, long dig, digging deep vibrato. Yeah, yeah. But, but in saying that though, it was it was a little bit difficult. Like like I was saying, of you know, when I was listening to it, it just just sounded like you. You know, it, it didn't didn't really. Come well, <laughs> that's I guess that's the best compliment you can get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But even like um, you, know, you hear some people when they do tapping, you know, you can tell oh, yeah, they've been influenced by Eddie or whatever. But your okay. your tapping is in a like a different style. Like I can't remember what song it was, but there was one you were doing where you did the tapping. But it sounded like you know when you do the uh, the pick tapping to get the, the real fast one, but you're mm-hmm. actually using your fingers. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like really fast ones. It was it was fingers. I actually haven't used tapping in my solos for like ten years, twelve years. Okay. But I get uh, uh, on this album I'm using it because I really thought that it fit the song very well. Yeah. So I just kind of. Uh, Use it and same thing on that solo. I panned it left and right, recorded it twice. Mm. And I started doing that on the last album. I just find it so uh, gets that uh, chorusy effect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you you can't really make it a hundred percent accurate. It, it's gonna differ with because you you on feel and all that. Yeah. That's why it makes it so interesting and more more alive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it sounds great. So. Congratulations cool, again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. No, yeah, I, pushed, I pushed myself. Yeah, no, I really dig you. You're playing on this. It's great. Cool, man. All right. Listen, thank you very much for the interview. It was a great time. No, thank you, Vic. And uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you in Australia next year. Absolutely, man. Take care. Right. No worries. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.